Hi everyone, welcome back to the third vlog of this holy month of Ramadan. Hope you all are doing well. Now, I was planning to shoot only on the day of an iftar gathering at our home for our cousins and friends, which is what I usually like to film. But I have never shown what it's like a day before that. Because usually, when I have to prepare so much for that day, I try to make the previous day meals very simple as I will be anyway having lots of works for the next day. I'll have to prepare so much the night before and so on. But I was in a mood to cook something different and thought to share with you all. In the later part of this video, we'll talk about that after cooking. Usually, when I have any gatherings coming up, I try to empty my fridge or pantry by cooking with most of what I have in there. So that way, if I need to store something in the fridge, I have lots of space. And having said that, I had puff pastry sheets in my freezer. As a snack, prepared egg puffs. For the masala, I sauteed chopped ginger, garlic and green chilies in some oil. Then goes in chopped onion. Here I'm making just 4 puffs for the 4 of us, so the ingredients are taken accordingly. Saute till it's soft and light brown. Some salt and crushed black pepper. Some garam masala powder and some turmeric powder. Few chopped coriander leaves and mix well. That's done. Turn off the flame. Many of you keep asking me where did I get this cooking pot as well as the steamer. These both are separate and I got these from IKEA when I was in Riyadh. The steaming vessel I guess fits on top of any pot you buy from IKEA. I anyway wanted a medium sized cooking pot and a steamer at the same time. Now you can boil the eggs in a pressure cooker or the other way. For a change, I used an idli tray. I needed four so used one tray for it. Grease them with some oil. I used coconut oil. Break each egg into each grease mold. Gently place it on top of the boiling water. Just a sprinkle of salt on top of each. I cook this for 8 to 9 minutes on medium flame. I was in a mood for cooking that's for sure but it also had to be something easy and not time consuming. So made a chicken potato dish. It's like a one pot dinner meal. If you remember, recently and even before I had posted a recipe on kofta tahini. You can find the links below in the description box. Just giving a bit of change here, this dish is almost prepared that way. I used curd that I had in the fridge and wanted to empty it because I needed new one for the next day. To that goes in some tahini. If you don't have that, you can use fresh cream or simply skip it. I have to soon label these spice jars. It's not hard for me to check what's in which but on busy days it's not easy either. To the curd goes in cumin powder, paprika, chili flakes, dry basil, dry parsley, very little dry oregano, salt, crushed black pepper and whisk all together. Keep that aside. Meanwhile the eggs are done. Before taking them out from the mold, it needs to cool down. Slicing potatoes, not very thin nor very thick. I need this pan so empty the masala required for the egg puffs. Adding some olive oil. Again sauteed some chopped ginger, garlic and green chilies. I forgot to switch on my camera. I added the sauteed stuff into this curd mixture. Chicken, I marinated it in some turmeric powder, chili powder, salt and olive oil.
Mix the chicken in this marinade and let it rest for 15 minutes. Use a baking dish, add some olive oil at the base. Place half the potatoes. Then goes in the chicken, spread it evenly. Then on top goes in the rest of the potatoes. Some green peas. Now you can add any veggies of your choice like carrots, broccoli, cauliflower or any other. I added cherry tomatoes. Thank you for the tip given by many of you on my Instagram when I shared this on my story. I had to give a small slit that it wouldn't burst while cooking in the oven and make it hard for cleaning. Bake in a preheated oven at 220 degrees Celsius for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, getting the puffs ready which is the next one in queue to go into the oven. Placing the onion masala on each puff sheet. The eggs have cooled down. Remove each and place on top of the masala. Place another puff sheet on top of each. Press the sides with a fork. I gently give a press with my finger to make sure it's close. After 20 minutes of baking, I took out this dish and poured the curd mix. Place it back into the oven and bake for another 30 minutes. You may add some cheese on top if you want. Once it's done, give a mix. Meanwhile, the puffs are baking at 220 degrees Celsius with the top and bottom heat for around 20 to 25 minutes or until it puffs up and turns cold and brown. Every time I prepare this semolina drink and you might have already seen that. This time, slight changes. To the milk, I added some crushed pistachios which was lying in my freezer ever since I made the kunafa last time. So use this into the semolina drink. And this time, I didn't fry shallots, only cashews. And that's a different one today. There you have the egg puffs. Sliced it in triangles and this is how it looks inside. In case my family needed something to have with the potato dish, which of course my husband will definitely want, I steamed these pita breads sliced in half. Steaming will make it soft and taste better. My oven needs a quick cleaning. If I don't do it now, it will stick like long. I poured some Jif and dishwashing liquid with some water on top of these. Left it for some time. Dishwasher saves a lot of time.
and now it's iftar time. That's the delicious egg puffs. Time to scrub these off. And that's done. Now to the next part of this video. I had been sharing lot of tips you can follow for easy cooking, especially when you have guests coming. And these days or I can say for almost a year, I don't show much of that because I have already done that in the past. But many of you asked me about the time management, which I feel I need to show more of such tips again in some videos. And that's another reason which made me shoot today's vlog. So you can see what preparations I did for tomorrow's iftar gathering. This is not just for iftar, it applies for any parties at home, be it breakfast, lunch or dinner. If you know me for some time, you know how much I love floral prints on my dresses. And when it comes to flowers, I need to get them. Got this from Lulu as there is Vishu offer going on. They had kept some flowers and bouquets, bought roses. I had shared this on my Instagram story too. Now the day before any gatherings or party at home, always be prepared and check what can take so much time. And in fact, we don't realize those. Among those are refilling oil bottles, spice jars and so on. My oil bottles, both were empty. I can save, maybe not so much, but some amount of time tomorrow if I fill this earlier. I keep coconut oil in one and sunflower oil in another. These are the oils I normally use. If cooking some Arabic dishes, I use olive oil which I keep underneath. If you see, there's whole black peppercorns in my coconut oil bottle. This helps in the shelf life of the oil. This makes the oil from going bad. If you have done a bit of shopping the day before, keep everything in its place. Earlier, I used to keep it lying around thinking it will be easy for me to take from the covers. But in fact, it gives a messy kitchen look. I like my kitchen to be neat when I have major cooking coming up. Only then I can do it in a calm manner or else I get really frustrated. Ginger garlic paste is something I don't store in the fridge. But preparing it a day before will save a lot of time. And I had once shown how to store these paste for a longer period, which is in my Ramadan preparation video a couple of years back. You need to take a generous amount of ginger, garlic and green chilies. Make sure the skin is removed, they are washed from any dirt. And then lay it on a towel to let it dry. It shouldn't be wet. It was late night and I was feeling a bit hungry. So served food for me and my husband. Kids went to bed early as they have school tomorrow. We bought chapati from a restaurant so that we can have it for suhoor too. I had half a chapati now along with the chicken potato dish.
back into the kitchen storing green chilies removing the top stem part place it in between tissue paper cover and place it in the fridge this again goes for curry leaves i have tried many ways to store curry leaves and only this way work Now for garlic paste before adding it in the blender make sure the blender is free from moisture and even the garlic the preservatives here are oil and salt this is sunflower oil i'm using and then goes in enough salt blend to a paste store this in a glass bottle the same goes for the rest that's ginger and green chilies but before using for the next Make sure the blender is washed and dried using a towel or tissue paper. These were a bit warm after blending, so we'll leave it that to cool down completely and then we'll place that in the fridge. I'm making a dish using beef tomorrow, so I cut those in the needed size, cleaned it well and drained the excess water in a strainer. Then I placed it in a box and that goes in the freezer. This saves a lot of time. You can do this for chicken or any seafood, especially if you're using prawns, cleaning them ahead is a life saver. So that's all for today's vlog and I hope you found it useful. Do try the recipes as well and let me know your feedback. See you with another video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.